Hey guys, Mangrel here, and today we're going to install a custom firmware on our Big Tree Tech SKR Mini version 2. I know there are a lot of other guides out there, but when I tried to follow those guides, I ran into a lot of issues, primarily around compiling the firmware. So spent a lot of time trying to investigate those issues and hope that this video will help you avoid having to spend that time. Our goal here is to upgrade our firmware, make some slight tweaks to the firmware based on our specific machine, and most importantly, activate the mesh bed leveling feature. This feature lets you manually level the bed in nine different points and have the printer actually build a mesh and automatically adjust for any warpage in your bed. This is similar to what would happen automatically with a leveling sensor, such as a BL Touch. The difference here is that we can get similar results, although manually, without having to spend any money or purchase a leveling sensor. We'll provide links in the description for all the sites you need to visit, but the first thing you have to do is download the Visual Studio code. So you go to code.visualstudio.com and we say download for Windows. I accept. All right, and the next software we require is the JIT client. And this is a client that's used for version management, which is actually required by Visual Studio. Without this, I kept getting compilation errors. So we'll go to download. Windows. Okay, next thing we need to do is get our firmware for the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini. So this is their GitHub site. We'll just go and say download zip. Save. And this will download all these different files in the whole repository. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to extract this folder in the root of our C colon. So just right click and say extract. Okay, now within this folder, we see the whole repository and what we want is a firmware and we want version two because that's what our board is and we want this folder here. So what we'll just do is we'll take this out of here, go back to C colon, stick this in here. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. So now that we have our version two firmware folder in the root directory, we're gonna go inside here and we see the platform IO file. We'll open this up and we're gonna search for our environment. Okay. So here's our environment. And we see that it says platform is STM32. Now we wanna change this to STM32 version 6.2 or, or less. Save. This will force Visual Studio to use a older version of the platform when compiling. All right, so we'll close everything and now we will open up Visual Studio code. Then we'll navigate to extensions. And it looks like I've already got platform IO installed. If you don't, you'll just search for platform IO here. It'll come up and then you're able to install it. Then we'll navigate to platform IO. We'll go under platforms and we can see that our STM is version eight and we have some updates. So we'll go ahead and do our update. Okay, so now we'll come down to our platform IO. We'll go open project and we'll navigate to where we have our Marlin firmware. So here, and you only want to go down to the folder where you've got your platform IO file and we'll click on open. 
And now we can see that all these files are here. We wanna to go to our configuration H. And here we have the ability of changing all these different uh, configurations. First thing we'll do is we'll change our author just so that we know who last modified this firmware. Next, we'll give our printer a custom name. And because we're not using a probe, we'll comment out this here. Zmin probe uses Zmin uh, end stop pin. We don't use BL touch, so we'll get rid of that as well. And it really looks like this printer firmware was set up to use um, auto leveling. That's why the BL touch was active. That's why we got the bilinear. So we want to deactivate all these. And then we'll activate mesh bed leveling. We'll activate pro manually. We'll activate the LCD bed leveling. So we've got a menu for doing our actual bed leveling. And just for fun, because I don't print ABS, I'll just change this to TPU. We'll turn this on, restore leveling after G28. And again, because we don't use a leveling sensor, we don't want the homing to be in the center of um, the bed. We want it to be off to the side, the left the front. So we'll turn off safe homing. All right, guys, one small update. When you activate the probe manually, you want to make sure that you also activate this manual probe start Z. And what this will do is give you some extra uh, height on the Z axis when the head moves to each of the leveling points. Without this active, what will happen is as the head moves to each of the leveling points, it retains the value of the prior point. For example, if the first leveling point was, let's say, minus 0.2, when you go to the next leveling point, the head will automatically go to minus 0.2. And if your bed is warped upwards, that minus 0.2 will cause the head to hit your bed. By having this value here, the nozzle will automatically go to 0.2 as a starting point. So you definitely want to have this turned on. So last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna change our bed size. And this is because I use the direct drive which has the motor facing back and this is the uh, speed drive setup. So we'll change this to 200 so we don't have the motor crashing into the frame. And then Z-Max here, we'll change this over to, we'll probably go you know, 220. All right, so that should be good. So now I'm going to click down here on the build. So we see that the build was successful. It took roughly one minute. Now what we do is we go back into our folder with the firmware files. We go under PIO, so platform IO. We'll go under build. We'll go under our environment. And we should see a firmware.bin file. So all we have to do now is copy this file into an SD card, turn the printer off, put the SD card in, turn it on, and we should be good to go. So let's do that. All right, so when you turn the printer on with the firmware file installed, we see we get a blank screen. So right now it's doing its firmware update. and hopefully it'll say Mangoril. Yep, so we see over here, it says Mangoril BTT. So we know that the firmware did flash. Next thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go under our configuration. We're gonna do a quick reset here. So we store defaults. And then we're just gonna go under advanced. I'm gonna go to initialize EEPROM. And now you should be good to go. So just uh, redo your configurations, any you know, steps changes, any uh, drive current changes, and that's it. All right, so now if we go under our menu, we go motion, we see we have an option for bed leveling. So let's go ahead and heat this up, preheat. 
Okay, now that we've hit temperature, we'll go into the menu, motion, bed leveling, and then we'll do a fade height of 10, and then we'll say level bed. All right, so now that we're ready to do our bed leveling, we'll click here and we'll see if we go to nine points. So we'll place this underneath as the nozzle comes down. And we can see it's got a lot of play right now. So we'll come back here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the, the bed down just to get us the right amount of play on the paper. Okay, now we'll go click to the next point. And we can see there's a lot of space here, so we need to go a lot lower. And I do this until there is just a little bit of grab on the paper. Okay, next point. All right, there you go, and it says leveling done. And now you're good to do your print. Now that we're done with the mesh bed leveling, we can see that the Z-axis is actually moving while we print to compensate for the warp bed. Hope you found this video useful. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content on the Ender 3 Pro. If you have any questions, leave a comment and we'll do our best to help.